Hey, how you guys doing? This is producer from Brothers Comics. Welcome to the Marvel Hacks. It's going to be our review, y'all, of Across the Spider-Verse, uh, the second Miles Morales movie um, from Sony Studios in association with Marvel and blah, 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 blah. On the line tonight, it's uh, Brother Beavis, man. What's happening? What's up, y'all? The whip. Yeah. I think I lost your voice there. Hmm. I said, oh, okay. what's up, y'all? The whip. Okay. I got you. <laughs> I know. Right. We're good. Uh, so, yeah, that, uh, we're like two weeks late on the review. Um, not that it took us that long to see it. Like, I saw it uh, opening weekend. Um, and the issue became really that I had forgotten that the movie was coming out. You know, our initial thoughts on the first Spider-Verse movie is that it was amazing. Like, no pun intended. Spectacular. Uh, it was great. And, you know... I knew there was going to be a sequel. I knew I had seen trailers for that sequel, but I just kind of lost track of time that I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, my son was like, no, it's this weekend. I'm like, huh? Like, you saw it opening weekend as well? Yeah, but I saw like um, a, a movie or two ago that I saw a trailer for it. And it was like coming in July 2022. It was like an old trailer. Mm. Like, I don't know how, how many times they moved it out. But yeah, I was also not aware it was coming out till you mentioned it, I think. Yeah, I was just like, oh, shoot, I guess I should buy tickets. And then, you know, the movie theater we go to, it's a, you know, a recline reserve seating place. And so, all right, uh, let me go get these tickets for the nine, time that I would normally do it. Mm, nope, corners all in the front. I'm like, damn it. And I had to keep pushing back. And so we got there and I was like, oh, OK, great. You know, so we're going to spoil the shit out of this because it's been out for what, two plus weeks now. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, I don't know how you can call yourself a comic book or a Spider-Man fan. But uh, we're going to go through it, you know, kind of bit by bit. Some of the parts that we like, some of the parts we dislike. The, the initial thought when the initial reviews were coming through, and we talked about this in the group chat, was people was like, oh, no, it's better than the first one. Pump your brakes, playboy. <laughs> um, it's a good movie, but it's not anywhere close to the first one, correct? I would agree. I just think the structure, um, you know, it's stylistically, I think, you know, they mix in different styles. So, uh, you know, the animation was one of the big attractions, uh, uh, you know, all the different and and the different spider people was a, was an attraction. And they do that like to the nth degree here. Yeah. But I think structurally it was it was not as good. And obviously uh, they did not throw the ring into into Mordor at the end. <laughs> <laughs> which I think surprised many people. Yes. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I can't, I can't say it was um, as, as good as the first. And, and unfortunately, like I wish I had known it was coming out. I would have watched the first one again. Cause there were so many like callbacks and, and so many yeah. kind of like repeat jokes that I, I, cause I would like forgotten it. Like there's an opening scene where like his, where Jefferson's about to like jump off a roof and then they do the gag where he runs down the steps and I was laughing yeah. My yeah. daughter's like, oh, that was in the first one. I was like, oh, yeah, because I, like, forgot about it. So Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and you think about it, what, Spider-Verse was, like, what, 20? 2018. We just, we yeah. actually just watched it, and it's five years mm. old now. It's crazy. Yeah. It, that's even crazier. That's a pre-COVID movie on top of mm. that. And, you know, and again, like, I got a kid whose mother is Puerto Rican, and he's pirate black. So, you know my son he his his geekdom is pretty much kind of only diverted to video games now not really comic books not really comic book movies but video game wise oh yeah no i'm definitely getting that spider-man Miles morales game for sure and then he was the one leading the charge for this movie because the character means so much to him mm -hmm. so i'm like all right well i guess we're going to this movie so let's pack up the whole crew and get on out there so yeah as of the time i wrote these notes it had made like $225 million already, by far surpassing the first one. Uh, my theater was packed, obviously, because I had to keep pushing my time back. And it was packed full of like young kids, like something that you don't really see at the movie theater, like teenagers, like that kind of young kids. And it was just like kind of surprising. Was your theater like diverse at all or no? Um, it was pretty diverse. I was the I was sitting next to a black dude, which was the funny part, because when it ended, he was like, that shit better come out next week. And I was like, <laughs> um, but it was, I think it was a mix. There were a lot of kids. There were a lot of adults. I think, you know, this is a movie I think that has, you know, broad appeal because it is 
a cartoon superhero, but it is kind of, you know, it's kind of involved. So I think there is broad appeal, but yeah. I, you know, my, my go-to theater is now closed, but the, you know, the dirt theater that I could just walk up to anytime, but I think I might've found a new place. It's like, uh, where, uh, the big theater in the mall, there's like another mm -hmm. theater in the same city and, mm -hmm. uh, if not as many people go there let's say okay. so i might have an in on a place i can go yeah without having to get out so nice. there were plenty of open seats we had um yeah i think we had reserved seats but there was plenty open okay yeah no that's so funny uh, we'll get to the movie here in a second i was sitting there you know bought the tickets online you know never even get a ticket just show them the freaking qr code on my phone blah blah blah, blah. and i'm like um Man, I don't miss the days of having to show up an hour and a half mm. before the movie and sitting on the floor well, waiting for the seats to run in there. I yeah. do not miss that shit. And I purposely kind of got there late and almost I I got there like actually after it started because the last movie I saw Guardians might have been the one and it there it felt like there was like 45 minutes of stuff in advance. So like yeah. I wasn't really pressed to get there like at start time or whatever and we were waiting for like concessions to get made. So mm -hmm. we walked in and the movie was already underway with the Gwen okay. storyline. But, you know, I, I was like, I, I feel like I can follow it. And I didn't have to, like, watch all the ads and everything else. Yeah. I did miss hold, that. Hold up. Hold up. This is a side brother topic. So you didn't get there early for the Maria Menounos? Um, <laughs> I was almost going to invoke her. Nah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, hold, yeah. Hold up. I was about to say. because. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's, she's fine. But, like, I've seen, like, I mean. It is, yeah. it is. No, I understand. She's all there. She's there all the time. Like I right. get it, but I mean, I'm right. like, hey, hey, ho, ho, shh. I, I yeah, I, I didn't <laughs> avoid the, the that was the part I wasn't trying to miss out on. <laughs> Noted. All right. So once we get through Maria Munoz and all of those freaking credits and trailers, uh, we start on Earth 65. It's Gwen uh, as Spider Girl, um, and she's talking to her world's Peter Parker. And I guess this is a story that we. It, I, I help me out here. Is this a story that was would have been told in the first movie, just off screen, they which just, is why she wound up in his world, or this is just something when she went back? When they, um, when she meets, I think this is her origin story. When they mm -hmm. meet and they go into uh, like the ideal Peter Parker's basement, and they all share their stories. Like hers yeah. is like they talk about everybody they lost, and they can't save everybody, mm -hmm. and she couldn't save her friend Peter Parker. So I think right. this is just her more detail on the origin story. Right. That she just glossed over because it was like everybody else's. And he, ha and you know, as we'll get to, you know, what's a, a canon event here in a little bit, you know, but, you know, in this world, Peter Parker winds up becoming the lizard um, through some version of an experiment. And, you know, in the process of trying to save him, she winds up not saving him and he winds up dying. Uh, and then she, you know, Spider Gwen is hunted by the police and the police chief is her father, Captain Stacy. And it creates all the teen angst or whatever that you would normally get in these particular movies. The two parts of this one, the easier part first. So I got hearing issues and our movie theater was turned so far down, especially on the Gwen part. Like it was really hard for me to understand anything that was happening there. I'm like freaking pressing my phone for the freaking closed captions to come on. It was bad when it switched over to, so Miles's world, it got a little bit better. But then when I got home, there was something on Twitter that the director of the movie was saying, like, hey, yes, tell your theater to turn it up to 7.5 or whatever. So there was that. But two, like the Gwen part was very, very long. And I was just like, I don't know if it, I was fidgety because of that or I was fidgety because I couldn't hear. But I, I it it felt a little bit tacked on to the front of a Miles Morales movie. Your thoughts? But see, and that's the part I missed, so that didn't bother me. Yeah, but it also, but it also was kind of quiet. Um, mm -hmm. And again, the guy next to me commented on that. I think he might have even got up and said something to him. But yeah, yeah, it did seem quiet. But I didn't I, like it was a new theater, so I didn't know if it was just how they roll or what. So yeah, no, I didn't I, get a whole yeah. lot of it. Yeah, for some reason that was a, a thing that was there. So now Spider that's like, oh no, we made it dark to take advantage of your new TV. <laughs> like shut up game of thrones I yeah for so real much. oh my god don't do it uh so now she's spider gwen's hunted by her father and when she's on patrol one night you know you get the glitch and you get this vulture character that was a really cool design although kind of busy excuse me and he's being hunted actually by another spider-man 
or to Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man 2099 and uh, was Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, who's pregnant. Uh, and, you know, they tell her about this whole bit uh, about, you know, this spider world that she's all into now. And they take her under her wings or whatever. Okay, did you read Spider-Man 2099 back in the day? Of course I did. I was a huge mark uh, when this stuff was coming out. <laughs> it's like 92. Yeah, I got, I had um, Spider-Man 2099, which I I always kind of liked. Like I couldn't, like, I would not have remembered the part about where they got him hooked on drugs to make him Spider-Man. Mm. <clears throat> but I always, re- I kind of liked that one. And it was um, Rick Leonardi art. But like yeah. good Rick Leonardi art, like we've seen yeah. bad Rick Leonardi. But mm. and I had a uh, Rampage, which was the Jim Lee one, or jo- I'm sorry, the Stan Lee written one. It was god awful. It mm. was you know, it yeah. was everything was an exclamation point. He was like <laughs> a cross between like Kevin Nash and Cable, probably. Mm. I don't know. It was bad. Um, the X Men 2099. I read that, and I was just dying for it to ever connect back to anything related to the X Men, mm. and it never did. Mm. And then um, Ghost Rider 2099. I the art it was that was Chris Bicciolo, and mm. the art was phenomenal. It was like super cyberpunk, but I think I read like two of those, and that was out. Yeah, yeah of the 2099 series, I remember Spider Man 29 2099 being the best. Okay, well, this is the Spider Society that is our group here and you know once they take her under their wing we switch back to earth 1610 which is brooklyn which is miles and you know and he's struggling you know to get to a school meeting you know with his parents as you know this kind of back and forth thing as he's trying to get there and he encounters our spoiler alert like really our b villain which is the spot and um you know, they tie it back into it where he the, the guy that was the scientist that was the spot was in the uh, where the super collider or whatever exploded or whatever. And that's how he wound up getting his spot like powers. Uh, I just did a review of the first a few appearances of the spot uh, for brotherscomics.com. You can go back there and read it. And I mean, the opening part of my paragraph was, OK, so if you read Spider-Man in the 80s and early 90s, like the for every green goblin there's a spot <laughs> or a red rocket or uh i mean the pay was P- pistol pete pace pete like pace, i mean there's just pete. yeah there's just a whole bunch of people with really goofy powers that come in beat spider-man up for an issue He comes back the next issue and dispatches him, and then it's on to the next villain or whichever super villain is controlling the shitty villains. And in this world, it's Kingpin. Uh, You know, that's that. I mean, those are some bad villains, man. I remember the spot uh, really only from the Spider-Man cartoon, and it was pretty much like after it had jumped the shark. Yes. He was part of the Mary Jane got pulled out, and then Spider-Man was sad. And that's yeah. about the time I either stopped watching it or it stopped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, that Fox cartoon definitely has a moment where it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm good. I'm probably seen enough. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I guess Neogenic that. Recombinator, I got it. Yeah, yes. I, got uh, it. I mean, yeah, it is bad. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, Spide- Miles is still longing for Gwen, you know. And there's the, you know, undercurrent romantic relationship there. But I think he's also longing for a community because his parents don't know that he's Spider-Man. Really, the only person that does know is uh, uh, Genki. Um, And, you know, he kind of has to keep that secret, you know, between them and to themselves. You know, so he kind of misses that part of it. You know, all his other spider people went away, um, you know, at the end of the first movie. So, you know, Gwen, obviously, for romantic reasons or whatever. So anyway. So, yeah, we get this fight fight with the spot like this kind of all through Brooklyn or whatever interspersed with his parent teacher conference. But, you know, I mean, like, it's just, it's great. You know, the miles character has the banter down. He's, you know, he's updated his costume. Like, I mean, it's to me, this is when the movie started to get started. I don't, you know, what you think about it. Uh, This for me was the long stretch of, so what is this movie going to be about? Yeah. Like, (laughs) And this this is kind of the structure where like I got it, teen angst, you know, you know all the the cultural aspects, the family mm-hmm. aspects, the the missing friends, got it, got it. I feel like this part of it went on 
for mm-hmm. a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's not that it's bad. It's just that, like, if you if you think about, like, they had to make the decision to make two movies. So mm-hmm. if it ever feels like maybe too long, then maybe yeah. there was a decision to be made where this could have been broken down. But Right, yeah. It was all good. It's all good. St- it was all great looking, and it's great character development. And But, yeah, this, this is where it stretched for me. Yeah, and... Yeah, I, I can understand what you're saying there. And then, you know, w- Gwen winds up coming back with the rest of the Spider Society or whatever. And, you know, because the spot is opening up these multi dimensions or whatever, you know, they're trying to shut that down. We wind up in India. We get in, uh, meet the India Spider Man. Um, great. Yes, I thought it was really good. Um, and then we get to uh, <laughs> meet Punk Rock Spider Man, which is Chai T. It's T T. Yeah, yeah, it's this T T. Yes, <laughs> it's been a uh, running joke in this house since the movie happened. Uh, and yeah, I like, we get you know Punk Rock Spider Man as well, which is Hobie, which is I I didn't know until later it was de- voiced by Daniel. I think I can't ever remember his name. Kulaya. Yeah, I yeah. saw him in the credits and I was like, who is that? And then yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Like, and I came back, oh, that makes sense now. Yes. Yeah, well, because people forget he's British. Yeah. And um <laughs> Well, the funny part was when they were like, Oh, he's with Hobie. And I was like, Who's Hobie? And they yeah. were like getting all worked up. <laughs> I, was just, I was just going through my Dragon Con uh Dragon Con, yeah, Dragon Con pictures from last summer, really about a year ago now. And I was like, I had all these pictures of freaking like punk rock Spider Man. I'm like, what? 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 Like I didn't even rem- I didn't even remember really the character until I saw it back on screen again. I was like, oh, okay, so this has been a thing for a bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah, so my, you know, they get there and then in the while they're fighting in India, Miles winds up saving. I think it's the father of Indian Spider Man. Uh, no, it would have been the father of Indian Spider Man's girlfriend. Girlfriend. It was. It was effectively her captain stacy but it was okay i can't remember it was i can't remember what the title was Mm -hmm. but it was somebody sing but it was it was it was the equivalent of glenn stacy's police chief father right and then he just made like what we call a uh your boy uh, just woke up i saw yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah i just saw uh it it created a canon event and that's going to become a problem here so to kind of when I heard that, it. I, I kind of popped when I heard him call. Oh, it I did like, too. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that's I did a too. Fuck insider turn. Right. Yeah. And then they and essentially they made Miguel Spider Man twenty ninety nine. They made Miguel a really he is your a villain here mm-hmm. because even though the spot spot has, uh, you know traditional villain history background story. Hey, you did this to me. I need to get revenge on you for doing it to me. And then that's it. Whereas Miguel's villain arc really is more of a, hey, look, I'm trying to control everything here and you have become an anomaly, which they used, which was, you know, kind of funny in terms of that in the MCU or whatever. But he's you're an anomaly. And when you interrupted this canon event, like you're you're really messing up everything. And, you know, I thought it was kind of cool that they did that as well um let's see we get uh let's see peter uh oh yeah, and to get... me that was like that's the reveal of okay this is what this movie's about and that comes right. like a solid hour plus into yeah. the movie that was yeah. my primary issue and then we get a return of i call it nick miller spider-man um <laughs> peter b. Parker. It, yeah peter b parker we get mayday uh their baby as well you know as a reappearance there because they wind up making their way into the spider headquarters or whatever they wanted to call it. And, you know, where we're, we're setting up, which I thought was like, obviously the best part of the movie where they mm-hmm. set up this, uh, you know, escape for miles to get out of there, to try to get back to his world. And so, you know, we- so if you're, if your son identifies with miles, please believe I identify with beleaguered father with a beer belly peter b <laughs> parker <laughs> duly noted <laughs> yeah so and then again miguel had explained to him like look you you're an anomaly uh you but you the spider that would bit you wasn't yeah. even from your world or whatever like this like you are you need to be eliminated and like i said it leads to this chase and then we go through this whole thing where all the spider man people 
are after miles and you see every single one that you could possibly want to see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and it, it was great. I mean, okay. So my note here says fan service has become a dirty word. It, it has, but it also shouldn't be at times as well. Like there's good fan service and there's bad fan service. And I thought for this one, I thought it was actually good fan service because it made you kind of refocus that, hey, all of this stuff is kind of tied in together, even across, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple of mostly the Sony projects, but, you know, you know, some of the other ones as well. And then played into the history of Spider-Man, which goes back into the 60s, at least with the cartoon, you know, all the way through. So, I mean, I popped for, you know, a lot of them. You know, I mean, which one where you were like, oh, shit, that, you know, the <laughs> the Leo and DiCaprio meme, you know, we're jumping out of the chair and pointing at the TV. Which ones did you pop for? Well, so uh, let me say first, like, I, I, w- I don't know how many like are these were actually appeared in something else or how many were made for the show. Mm-hmm. But honestly, the the biggest pop I had was a r- real life Uncle Aaron. Uh, mm-hmm. from the from the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Yeah. I was like, yeah. ah, that's Yeah, Donald Glover. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we popped for that one too. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that was that was a big one. I popped when for Spectacular Spider-Man like was in there from the cartoon that's now on Disney Plus if you haven't seen there's two seasons there, which is uh, I think the best Spider-Man cartoon at this point. Um so that was there, uh, you know, the Spider-Man where he lost his mask and he had the freaking paper bag over his head. Uh, like that one was, I mean, there were just so many. And I was just like, oh, you know, sitting next to people who have no idea what this is about. Like just not understanding like how exciting that was. And of course you get the calls back, you know, to, you know, the Tom Holland one mm-hmm. and, that, and uh, you know, the one that, from the Doctor Strange movie. Or no, what was that? Spider-Man european vacation no spider-man no way home no Far way home. home yeah sure yeah whatever yeah so you know for that you see all of those and you know and it and it, and it did create a great animation chase you know of him trying to escape from there i thought it was great actually yeah. that part was just like a probably you know just a great comic book scene i mean the multiverse is obviously a huge crutch but you know give him credit for for all the disparate properties spider-man properties over the year like to kind of acknowledge you know all of them in in a lot of ways you know it's the closest the x-men which is as equally convoluted as ever gotten was that (laughs) the cameos at the end of days of future past where they kind of lightweight tie it into you know at least a couple of the movies but those those were so disruptive but yeah i mean they just again when you can when you can say all realities cross here it's easy but you know they still had to do it so Oh, and I also Lego Spider Man. I was. Oh, like, that was great. Like yeah. <laughs> did you see that story online that that like some fourteen year old kid did that? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, he like made it and they put it into the movie. I was like, ah, my fourteen year old wasn't doing nothing like that. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, and then there was a there was the like a villain from the freaking uh spider-man and his amazing friends oh uh, <laughs> video game yeah guy. I, pop, I popped hard for that they're like we got a bunch of those or something like that yeah. didn't they? oh my god i popped hard <laughs> for that one too uh so yeah man. that's funny because like amazing spider-man or spider-man and his amazing friends is actually like even though it's all like the campy marvel stuff that with the effectively you know the the marvel equivalent of of holy rusted metal batman yeah, you know the exactly. equivalent of that because the fact that it actually has the villains in it, it makes that yeah. show really good. But then yeah. when they stop putting actual villains in there, yeah. like video game man, that all right, show. no, <laughs> okay. awful. Uh, okay, so he does make his escape, and he gets down, and Miles thinks that he's in his world. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert! You know he goes. He's gonna finally tell his mom. You know that he's Spider Man, and he goes to tell him. She's like, you know, who's that? Like, what are you talking about? And then we get Uncle Aaron come back, uh, you know, voiced by Marshall Ali. And man, that dude's voice makes me just like sit up like immediately. <laughs> like just, I mean, yeah. I, I hear like every time I hear his voice, I hear and see Cottonmouth. Yeah. You know, which again, is if you ever watch freaking Luke Cage, 
As soon as he dies, spoiler alert, you, you stop watching it. it. Yeah. yeah, you can turn it off. Just turn the whole thing off because he's the only thing that made that passable for six episodes. And, like, I just stood up, stayed right up, and we're like, oh, okay. And we start to figure out, you know what, hey, the canon event in that world was actually Miles' father dying. And, you know, the Miles of this world is a whole, he's the jackal. Like, he's the criminal and, like, doing all these illegal things or whatever. And it's like, uh, what? And okay, so this is my point where I was like, which one's Baldur's Gate? Because <laughs> I completely forgot that this shit was split into two movies. Because I'm sitting second. there. Yeah, oh, I'm sitting there like, damn, this shit been on for a minute, yo. I only <laughs> heard like 75% of it, but like, this has been on for a while. And I was like, uh-oh. And so now Gwen and the Spider Society you know, who she's been kind of dog trying to go back and find him and been ostracized from the, that group. Uh, she starts to assemble her team, which is essentially the team from the first movie with mm -hmm. Spider Noir and Penny Parker and uh, Peter B. Spider Parker. Ham. Yeah, Spider Ham. Like she assembles that crew, you know, and there was a little tie in from the beginning of the movie. If you missed like, you know, where she was in a band and then she was like, you know, she put her band back together. And, you know, she got Indian Spider-Man as well. And, you know, and that's how the movie ended. You know, which one's Baldur's Gate? Like, yeah. what? Yeah. And like, and then again, I had forgotten. My whole crew was like, what? It's a, what? And I was like, oh, they split it into two movies. <laughs> yeah, I had kind of forgotten that too. But, you know, like I said, I had forgotten the movie was even coming out. Yeah. But as it was building, I was like, this feels, I'm feeling cliffhanger. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is... <laughs> And, and I mean, like I enjoyed the movie. It felt yeah. long to me, mm. but I am like the setup for the sequel. Yeah. I am so hyped. Like that mm -hmm. reveal of, of miles as the prowler. Yeah. Um, that was great. Uh, mm -hmm. and you also, you, you failed to mention the whole, which has been a, a large part of the discussion, like, uh, Gwen's, uh, coming out to her father and the mm. imagery that's been attached to that as well. And this was as much her story as well. But yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I did she though? Well, so I think that it's interesting because like I think essentially they equated every coming out story in a sense, like everybody coming to terms with who they are. But mm. the fact that they coded it with specific imagery associated mm. with trans then like then that's the conclusion like oh she's trans and i don't know if that was i mean correct i think the writers have have said yes that you know that wasn't like a, a mistake or that was an intentional mm. but i don't know that they're claiming like no yes she is also trans i i think right. it was more of like just equating everybody's kind of coming of age and self-realization right to to that struggle regardless of kind of sexuality in a sense i could right. be wrong you know certainly for anyone who saw it in a different way and it resonated with them mm. like great but you know that was a big part of the story as well right yeah i yeah i didn't i didn't pick that up until i read about it online afterwards yeah. um and again i would say compared to the first movie this is a movie that you will see a lot more watching it the second time mm -hmm. like the first one it's like it the the artwork or whatever it was cool because it was the first time you've seen it but it was really kind of just a straight up story. Like it yeah. wasn't like, you know, only the glitches came in every once and then or when they were at the super collider, you know, things got a little bit goofy. Whereas this one, there's a lot of that going on and so much more going on on the screen. So you might need to, you know, not necessarily pay more attention to it, but pay more attention to it while you're actually watching it. It's kind of like uh, Star Wars versus Star Wars Special Edition. Mm -hmm. like yeah they, the you know it's just there's a ton of shit going on in the background and right. whether or not you could pick it up mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i i i mean uh, again I at least out. this time i didn't wonder if i was had walked into the 3d theater by mistake <laughs> and didn't get my glasses i walked out of that theater like hmm because everything i have time i see one of these types of movies i always think of y'all and i'm like well, my brother's going to hate the first part of it. Because, <laughs> uh, he hates teen angst. He's going to hate that. I was like, but over the most part, I was like, I thought he'd like it. I'm like, ah, oh, brother Beaver will still like it. You know, he'll probably have some things that he won't like, but he'll, he'll probably like, like over generally like it. 
And I was like, everybody's looking at me, you know, my daughter. And stuff, like, what'd you think? What'd you think? I'm like, I, I don't know if I have those initial reactions to the movies anymore. Not anymore, but like, I try to like, kind of like, all right, let me kind of process it because you can get like super hyped after walking out of them sometimes and you can't see like the forest for the trees like hold on a second let me go top to bottom on like what i think or what i thought about this and so it's kind of just kind of waiting to kind of like take it all in i was just like by the time i got to the car i was like that's a good ass movie mm. like I'm trying to figure out what i didn't like other than the fact that i couldn't hear it mm, there's nothing that i disliked about it like at all so I just kind of left it alone. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, the chat. I think that, I think that, um, like the movies that that we, I think we've liked the most, have had some sort of either pulled off a reveal we were expecting in a surprising way, or pulled off something that was a surprise. Right. And for me, like the not that it couldn't be foreseen, but. The, you know, the crossover of like, oh, no, you went back to the wrong reality and everything's mm -hmm. upside down and you're the bad guy. Right. That was not expected by me. So yeah. that was that was that was cool for me. Yeah, it, um, was a, it was a good like little twist there, you know. And again, like I, it, the fact that, you know, that they were able not necessarily keep it hidden, but the fact that they were able to keep hidden that it was, you know, split into two movies that most people wouldn't remember that. I thought that was kind of dope, too. So. Yeah, and I um there's there's so many little things that like you know have significance from the first movie that you know I didn't necessarily pick up on like the spider glitching when the spider yeah. bites him in the first movie it's glitching mm -hmm. and it's like that's a clue oh, I, I we didn't know what glitching necessarily meant at that point but no that was that spider was not from his universe and mm -hmm. you know the 42 keeps showing up stuff like that so yeah. it would it's you know f for them to have you know 5 months between um between or five years between movies and so many like little little groundwork that they had put in it's 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 somebody played the long game let's yeah. just put it that way right and again you know one of the flash flashbacks or one of the spider worlds they dipped right back into venom uh which were yeah. terrible movies you know if you like those good lord i don't know why you're listening to us and it's you know something that's actually Oh, okay. Like I see what you're trying to do. Now we got Craven coming out here as a live action movie, which looked awful. Uh, and that's our boy Aaron Johnson, man. We kind of like he him. Gets around, man. And it's like, but this looks bad. Uh, Morbius was not great. You saw it. I didn't. Uh, but like, you know, Sony, even though it's really their only property now, and they don't want to sell it to Marvel, you know, maybe stick with just this. Let them have freaking, um, you know, Peter Parker over there at the MCU and maybe just stick in this world, you know, yeah. and just, you know, animation ain't a bad world. And you have, you know, so many stories that you could tell through Spider-Man. I mean, hell, you could do the freaking clone saga yourself. You just introduced Ben Riley in this movie. I popped for that a little bit too. Yeah, we but, forgot to go. That was just Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, you could do that story and not make it a clown show like the comic book became. Yeah. Well, so think about like as as much was going on as and as dynamic as it was like when when Miles is escaping the spider lair and climbing the spire and all that like how much better was it as a cartoon than it would have been as right. CGI? Right. Right. Cause like mm -hmm. the CGI now, like I'm sure it's great, but I, I take almost nothing from it. It's so yeah. muddied and fast. Like mm -hmm. I, it's, you know, this I can follow and, mm -hmm. and you can do, you can do really, you can do a lot more with, you can do a lot more of the fantastic comic book stories in animation than you can in CGI and have it look good right and afford to do it i know this was this was i'm sure just as expensive as any other movie but you know the whole damn it they're all cartoons now anyway right there's so little that's actually like yeah you know not just cgi or sweetened in some way by cgi just do it a damn cartoon so principal shooting has wrapped up on uh fantastic four it lasted three days 
Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's basically what the headline would be. Because yeah. there is no real principal shooting; like it's all yeah. CGI. So, like, why not? You know, doing just more practical stuff through a cartoon yeah. that you could tell that story. And again, this DC, as we've talked about before, has made that transition. Essentially, like, yeah, we're going to do some of these live action movies, but we're going to keep pumping out these fairly high quality cartoon movies on. I can't call it Max on HBO. Yeah, or whatever it was called before HBO Max and do it that way. And, you know, at least be able to tell some stories that people are familiar with, with the commerce, the comics. And, you know, not shit on the comic book properties as a whole, but yeah, different discussion. Okay. All right, y'all. So, yeah. Uh, so if I'm doing star system, I would say, I, I don't know if I could ever give a movie a perfect score. I would say the first one was probably like if we're doing five stars or four stars, four stars. Uh, I'm Dave Meltzer, man. It was seven stars, seven star mm-hmm. match. Uh, no, sorry. The first one would be like a three and three quarter star. I on a say. five star scale? No, on a four, on a four. On okay. A four four stars. Sorry. Three and three quarters. Yeah. It feels like star search. Um, and then this one, I would probably give it like three and a half. It, it's good. It's just not as good. And that's kind of how I saw it. You. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know if it's because like I wasn't like really prepared, and then uh, the pacing it just took me so long to get into it. Um, but it but the the payoff at the end was worth it for me. Mm-hmm. But I, I would say like I, I think the first one is close to four stars, and I think mm-hmm. this one is you know three. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. unique. I think you still get even though this is you know the second part, there's still a uniqueness to this. Um, you know, relative to anything else we see. Okay. All right. It's a it's a fresher way to present stories that are starting to feel like they're just driven into the ground. So Correct. Give me yes. that. And that last Spider-Man movie, like it, love it, loathe it, felt very much like, okay, so what are we doing here near the yeah. end? Of it? Yeah. Yeah. And so this is a, a fresh perspective. And again, I you know, I don't think we'll ever get into a world where we don't ever have peter parker Mm. but we are definitely closer to a world without peter parker and miles morales than we ever been before like that character is super popular and not just Mm. in this house (laughs) Um, like you know when you go to cons that character is super popular and it's like oh okay now i'd be well in the venture that most of the people that are wearing those costumes 75 percent of them hadn't read one of them books possibly solid 75 percent and the fact that they have this to fall back on they don't necessarily need to and i get that you know they probably played the video game or they saw the first movie or seen his appearances in like whatever parts or whatever i mean i read his monthly comic book there for a bit it's height you know you're not breaking any new ground there it's very freaking spider-man-esque and the villains are pretty shaky but you know that's just kind of where it is. I mean, is it fair to say, and I, I don't know that you, I think you put him in this category, but as you would call them, the Plessy versus Ferguson characters, that he's yeah, by I far mean, the most successful? Oh, by far. Yeah, that's not yeah. even close. Yeah, I mean, he's the only one that feels like he has his own identity as Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, all the other ones just feel like a black version of that particular character. No, he feels very different. I mean, it's not a surprise. He's the only one that survived the freaking crushing of the ultimate ultimate verse. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, that's it. You know, I, although they're trying to bring that back. I mean, it's not a surprise. They were like, hey, you know what? I think we found something here. Let's bring him over, you know, to 1610. But all right, we're going to let Hutch into the stream here so he can give his very brief as we wrap this up uh, review of the Spider-Verse. Hello. Welcome. We, welcome we started 30 minutes, minutes ago. Ah, uh, yes, okay. yes. Give Give your, to the world. And that's okay. Give your Spider Verse review. One, we were surprised you saw it. And yes, uh, that, yes, yes. Two, just as a prediction, I said I, he probably hated the first part of it with Gwen <laughs> and all that teenage angst. But be, beyond that, I figured you might have enjoyed it. But go ahead. Yes, um, I did enjoy it. All, all in all. And it definitely, for the most part, it was a Spider Gwen movie until, I mean, toward the middle, almost it seemed like. Mm. Um, 
and and Nick Fur Nick Fury is a character that flipped over in the Plessy versus Ferguson. Oh, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but so that became more for the movies, though. I haven't seen Black Nick Fury that much in a comic book. No, no, he was in the Ultimates, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he, what yeah. Did, so are there? T- so what is the story there? Is there actually two Nick Furies now in the real? I thing? don't even know. Huh? Are they it, just get rid of the old crusty white dude or what? Yeah, I mean, after that movie with David David Hasselhoff, <laughs> I see. I haven't seen a black uh, or a white Nick Fury since. Yeah, that's not David Hasselhoff's fault, but it's okay. Yeah, but your, yeah. so, your movie. But I, I did. I did enjoy the movie. Great. I, um. Where I was located, they have dispensaries, so mm. it always helps to have a little uh, extra something, something in the gummies. <laughs> there's a there was a lot of shit moving around in that movie. Good gravy! Yeah, there's about three movies in there with all that shit flying around. Mm. But I yeah. did enjoy it. Uh, I I was upset that the ending happened. <laughs> and I, I can't wait two years for the next one. No, nah, March of yeah, hey, March of twenty four, March of twenty four. It's not far off. That's too long. No, nah, it's what six months, eight months, eight months, man, eight months. When that That's said enough. to be continued, that was all I could think of was Baldur's yeah. Gate and yeah, <laughs> <Lord of Rings. laughs> I was dying. Yes, hey, uh, I definitely got elbowed about that. No, FYI. <laughs> but yeah, no, we, we enjoyed it. Would you say that it was better than the first one, as many people have been saying? Hmm, that's a great question. Hmm. I think I, I think I, it, it's, man, it's close. I think I did, though. Kind, yeah, mm. I think I did. Okay. It more, this one was more, it was kind of it felt more. more preachy or more <laughs> something. Yeah, definitely more. Definitely, yeah, it was more fan servicey, uh, yeah, you know, which can definitely. definitely pop a number at times. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we, I mean, I, I was, we both enjoyed it. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's as good as the first one, but I, I need to go back and watch the first one too. It's been a while. It was on regular rotation. When it was on Netflix for my kids, but that movie was also five years old, as Brother Beavis just told us. And I'm like, five years? Five that years for real? Yeah, yeah it didn't seem possible. It's a pre-COVID movie, which I can't even imagine at this point. I can't remember that either. But yeah, yeah but now that I think about it, I think I did see it with somebody that yeah. ain't yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, yeah. wow. Yeah. But yes, yeah, I don't know. Sony uh, Sony should make all their movies animated. Yeah. Think, <laughs> which, which ones they still got left. Yeah, I think you might have heard us make that conversation there. Like this, they they could own like a whole like just portion of fandom or comic book fandom if they just devoted a bunch of their time to creating spider properties via animation just um, yeah yeah th- yeah they uh, apparently well it they made it like animal well, kind of anime it was it was mm-hmm. animated and you know if they did all the characters like that mobius and however lizard or all, all of them they might, yeah. they yeah, they would make lots of money that way. But think about all this, all the classic spider stories that you could tell via animation that would probably be much better than the story that you could tell live action. You know, mm-hmm. whether it was Craven's Last Hunt or the Clone Saga, or I, I mean, there's other things that you could do that aren't Green Goblin, Lizard. Sandman, uh, like the Doc whole, Ock. you know, oh, tip of like Doc Ock Rogue Gallery. Like you could tell other stories there, and you know, and just carve out this little space in the sp- in a, in of animation that would be unique to yourself. But that's where I've know. always thought Fantastic Four would be, yeah. you know, above all, like one of the the properties that would be better served as a cartoon. Because mm-hmm. how are you going to yeah. do the Negative Zone or any standing yeah. Galactus? Space? Galactus, yeah. yeah. And this makes it difficult. Silver Surfer. Mm-hmm. Hell, hell, Mr. Fantastic, Invisible yeah. Woman, mm-hmm. Human Torch. Yeah, all, <laughs> right. There, that movie is a. Uh oh, what's the time? Let me get a twenty. Yeah, I think I might text this to y'all. It, it's probably been a month or so ago now. It's off topic, but on. Dim Fantastic Four movies was on FX, 
Uh, oh, the Tim man. Salmons or Tim, what's, Tim whatever. It should been Tim Burton. It don't matter. Tim, Tim, whatever the dude's name is that directed both of those movies. Okay, they're not as awful as initially thought of. I mean, they're bad. Don't get me wrong. The first one's egregiously bad. The second one's not so much. Uh, it's it's more like choices that they made in the second one. Uh, but. <laughs> See, I thought the second one was worse. I, 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 there was a time where I thought the second one wasn't as bad. Yeah, and I tried to watch it. That movie's awful. Yeah, I, I, now again, I think I if, if Doctor Doom was better in mm. the first one, I think the first one could have been fine. Yeah, but they botched Doctor Doom, so yeah. they well, botched the whole thing. Having him riding on the surfboard about oh, that out. was bad. But and and they completely blew the Super Scroll. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, they, yeah. But and I. I, I but also, oh. but also, I would say too. I was on FX, so I was able to watch it with food fast forward and commercials and stuff. So it makes it a little bit easier. Like all oh, that part is stupid, and you just get there. Like you know, it's like you know, it's like skipping all the Jar Jar parts in the Phantom Menace. You know, that shit ain't that bad. Mm. Um. So yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. So yeah, that's our review of the Spider Verse, y'all. I have to change the title on this thing because it was supposed to be something else. Uh, but yeah, you better find it like as a SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. There are a bunch of geek movies that are coming out this summer. One of them started, I think, today, right? Uh, which is The Flash. The Flash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, Hutch, that is your character and your boy, not necessarily Ezra Miller. Um, but is there any chance that either of us I guess what well, Sam man, we love you, man, because we knew you would have went and seen this shit. He, he would have already seen it. You would and you could have pulled us through. Um, but any chance that anybody has any desire to see that movie in the movie theater? Is it passed to me? Anybody pass me the mic. The answer is yes. I oh. the answer is yes. I I am a Flash fan. I I do like the Flashpoint storyline. I ew, I might I might go see it. I might go it at the theater. Mm. I might. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I might. That's all. I, I it, but I gotta see within the next three. If I don't see within the next three days. I yeah, I'll awesome. see it on FX. on Max FX. on Max HBO Max. Never call yeah. it Max. Uh, uh, Brother Beavis, any chance no. the reviews have been not terrible? No, no, no chance. Okay. The, the the reviews, yeah, I've heard about the reviews, and I'm like, can't be that good. Um, uh, but you know, but. Th- yeah, DC. Like well, said, what? It doesn't everything. have any people of color in it, so it didn't have to get review bombed, right? Nah, oof. Boom, boom. Yeah. Uh, I, like nobody did, had to. Nobody had to. Uh, like cancel it. Yeah. I and and, and I can't because I'm not that person. I can't take out what they did prior yeah. to this movie coming out. I can't. Yeah. So that obviously is holding me back from going to see it. However, I, I just I, I just can't trust the DC movie. Like I don't care what anybody says. If even if they had not gone on a crime spree prior to this movie coming out, <laughs> I don't. I just you just can't trust DC movies. And worse yet, you can't trust people that say that the DC movies are good. Like yeah. that's the biggest one because again <laughs> we joked on here a lot. Like if DC wanted to pay us money to tell us that we like the movies, we would consider it. But those movies are bad. Like they're just bad yeah. movies. My and assumption so, is that movie's going to get by on Michael Keaton nostalgia. Yes, exactly, exactly, on and you know all the stuff. other nostalgia too. And by and well, you know Affleck, you know people like Batfleck too. He's in it as well. Like I mean, it's just all of that. And I heard like freaking Kevin Smith's freaking uh, Nick Cage is in it too, it's like yeah. a Superman or whatever. I was like, everybody's doing multiverse cameos. Now. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're going for it, just like I yeah. mean, like Marvel went for it, and they're. I mean, they're swinging for the fences. They yeah. they got nothing to lose. I got you. Okay, they got uh, nothing to lose. Hotch, as we do, like when you know Joe Burrow tears his appendix, emergency pod, emergency pod, emergency pod. <laughs> 
if you see the flash, you need to call an emergency pod, put that bat signal in the freaking mm-hmm. air so we can get on here and talk about this. Because sure. I, I, mean, um, I mean, we, I mean, you can, like I said, I think we already know everything that's going to happen. I mean, they kind of showed fair. everything. That's um, fair. Right. So, I mean, yes, if I go see it uh, here shortly, I will emergency pod yeah, hit and, the emergency and, and pod. do it. It can't be. I mean, but look, let's keep it a thousand. The last couple of Marvel movies ain't been nothing to write home about either. It's true. Yes. I, mean, I I still have nightmares about the eternal. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, 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 I don't necessarily disagree with the first part of that but i would also say you're at movie what 30 <laughs> 28 you know at a point like i totally understand that you're like you might be a little bit whatever dc's at least this dc extended universe ain't that far down the road and they've made i didn't see the batman so people think to say that that's good i refuse to watch a three-hour batman movie again uh they've made what let's say they Two. made about 20 no, no. DC extended. DC if you start, extended. if you start with Batman Begins, well, and they just wiped them all out too. So yeah, what does it even matter? If, if, right, there's, there's if you start with Batman Begins and and go to emo Batman, there's about four movies there, four or five. No, you get three. You get three of those. Three, you get two Superman, two Batman, movie. Superman, Batman, two Wonder Women, Wonder Woman's. That's seven. Uh, Aquaman. Aquaman. That's eight. Eight. Aquaman is eight. Are you going to count Suicide Squad? Sure, both of them. That's both ten. Them. Ten. Uh, the uh, Birds Justice of Prey. League movie. Birds of Prey, eleven. Justice League, twelve. Yeah, I mean, you're getting up there. Right, uh, right. Did we count them Joker side angle side mm. movie? I wouldn't count that. No, too. no. You can't count that. That's not, That transcended the, the genre. Right. <laughs> 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 Well, I that's some bullshit. Yes. And, the, and that movie, I thought that shit was that shit was kind of awful to me. I don't know how the hell he won as an Oscar on that shit. Because it I captured know. the true essence of the villain inside all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all Fuck I Captain. saw was a crazy white dude that was yeah. making a hot black chick. That's, yeah. that's what um, I got of that movie. That shit was mm, that, that I didn't see it. But I, it was given falling down, and I was like, mm, "Yeah, that's not a good idea." But right. in I, Joker face, and, and that, well, of course, that last Wonder Woman movie. I mean, oh, damn, I, one of the worst movies ever. One of the worst that got and, turned and off, that, and that Birds of yeah. Prey. Ugh. Birds I mean, of Prey, the most is... beautiful women, the most beautiful women in costume ever, to be some of the worst shit ever. Man. I made it through that movie. I'd well, I, I, wonder, movie I wonder. I wonder. I wonder why. I wonder why you made it through that. I movie. don't. I. I don't know. I, yeah. I have no idea. Right. Yeah. Right. I. Right. I can watch. I've watched some. What, what's her name? Margot. Margot Robbie. Yeah, I've watched some horrible Margot Robbie movie just to see her show her essence. Mm. So. Yeah. And most of them have been bad outside of Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen a DC movie since Partial of Wonder Woman. Oh, and, and you're right. She I looks haven't good. seen. She looks good I think I saw Wayne. part of Suicide. I also, I also turned off the suit, the, whatever the new Suicide Squad. I also turned that off. Mm. I couldn't get through that for free. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I, and I have no desire to see Aqua Bro when that comes out. Yeah. Blue Beetle. I did nah, enjoy Peacemaker, and I'm mildly I, I, I intrigued did, by it. I did watch Peacemaker during my sabbatical, and mm. yes, the dispensary helped, but I did watch <laughs> that too. <laughs> Duly noted. Okay. All right. I'm going to chop this into two pieces, you know, as we talk about this DC part here. But again, yes. Yeah. There's a big so, post. There's a big post credit sequence this is our post credit sequence yes exactly yeah did you stick around for, for, for the post deck all right if you're ever a subscriber you get this bonus content we talking yes, about bonus DC. content yes this is down this is dlc you're talking about uh downloadable crappy dc movies so yeah so soundcloud itunes stitcher google play if you're watching on youtube uh rate subscribe all of those types of things uh we will be back uh with 
that's what I was saying. There's a bunch of summer movies. Uh, I, I I can't I can't see myself going to another one. I'm not gonna see Transformers. I'm not gonna see Indiana Jones. Uh, nerd confession: I've never seen oh, an Indiana Jones movie. Oh, uh, the Mad Crew. I know. That's a uh, confession. I know. Uh, whatever. Just the Flash. I, I can't see me seeing that in the movie theater. I just can't. Um, you know, like uh, there's a lot of those movies that are coming out this summer, and I just I just I ain't got it in me. I just don't. <laughs> but. We'll see how it goes, and Hutch will call emergency pod after he sees the flash. You know, we'll go from there. But we do miss Sandman, man, because he definitely would have saw this shit already. He would have seen uh, it twice. He would have shook the uh, <laughs> hand, perhaps. Yeah, or, twice. Or something. Yeah, right. Had to pull him in anyway. Popcorn. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, y'all. So, as the producer, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Sign off, Brother Beavis. All right. See you next time. Excelsior. Hutch, go ahead and sign off. Hey, can't wait till March 2024. Gee. Yeah, it'll be nice. We'll all be there. See you later, everybody. Peace. Peace.